Forkfest.party, it's gonna be a party. So, some thoughts regarding this incident over at Winchester Town Hall, where the town moderator ordered me not to film in the area where I was required to be in order to vote. Or at least the area that was set up for me to vote in. Uh, normally my uh, protocol is to avoid doing much activism in the precise town where I live. You know, something has to happen sort of right in front of me in, in a spot that I was going to be anyway. But this was one reason why I got along so well with the authorities in Bedford. I just didn't generally you know, go to Bedford town meetings or call up Bedford town politicians with complaints, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, the only place you can vote is the place where you live. So uh, that activism I have to do here in Winchester. But uh, now that this videos are, these videos are all uploaded, the plan would be, just like in Bedford, to concentrate my activism everywhere else around the state but Winchester. Uh, the reason for doing that is that, well, there are several reasons. First of all, it, it sort of reduces by 15 or 20 percent the number of governments that can come after you, that, that, that are motivated to come after you for what you're doing. It's like if you're not a Bedford activist, for example, uh, you just happen to live there and most of your activism is in Concord at the State House or something, then your town government doesn't have much motivation to harass you. Yet, you're still effective politically because you're focused on something that is small enough for you to influence. It's also big enough so that it's going to matter to a much larger number of people what you accomplish, again, say, at the State House. You know, if you accomplish some successful activism in your town, it just affects a small number of people. This approach isn't best for everyone, and I'm glad there are a lot of people that do town activism. Uh, but for me, the default plan in, in a case like this where, you know, I've done something that puts me on the town radar, yeah, I'll do it again, you know, if they bother me again. But the default plan is just not to be focused that much on Winchester. I mean, if I wanted to, if I were being targeted, then, you know, there would be this endless uh, a list of options from which to pick for turning that into an advantage. I just wouldn't want to be perceived as the instigator of it. The other reason I'm, you know, have been able to be as active as I have in uh, New Hampshire politics since 2004 without really ever getting tired of it, it's because I'm not overstretching, I'm not doing things that make me do, uh, the, I, this is a term I call overheating. You know, that's when you're doing so much activism that, first of all, you can't sustain it forever, and you start to become a centralized force, uh, a snakehead that needs to be cut off in someone's mind. Uh, there, there's also that Churchill, uh, Churchill's uh, quote, you, you, you can do many things with impunity if you do not keep on doing them over and over again. So it's good not to do the same thing in the same spot over and over again, unless you're backed into a corner. But that cop, you know, the way he was looking at me while I was filming in that town hall, I've only seen that kind of hostile expression maybe two or three times at most that I can think of since I moved here to New Hampshire, you know, in 04. You know, it's much more common to have just a, a sort of pleasant, superficial interaction with police who generally aren't eager to poke the porcupine because there are so many other porcupines that are going to have a problem with that, and New Hampshire natives. Another thought, this, this moderator, Dennis M Murphy, the guy who was uh, giving me these probably illegal orders, it, it is important, if possible, to see the good in people who you have a, a concern about. Uh, and I, what I did appreciate about him was that at least he was answering most of my questions. He was engaging with me. He wasn't, he wasn't pretending like I wasn't there. He wasn't putting on airs or treating me as something other than an equal other than giving me the order. But, but you notice in the videos how he keeps referring to, he, he won't answer the question about whether I'd be violating some law by being, uh, you know, re recording in the area where I'm voting. 
instead of uh, even referring to law, he just keeps telling me that the Secretary of State's office told him it's okay. But, but the Secretary of State's office is not the law. It's not the Constitution. They're all supposed to be under that. You know, he didn't even he didn't even say, well, the Secretary of State's office uh, says that the law provides for such and such or whatnot. There's just there was no reference to law at all. Even if there had been, that wouldn't make the law right or his interpretation of it accurate or its wording constitutional. Uh, the the ex cop Brad Jardis from New Hampshire used to say it's possible and much more powerful to get in trouble for trying to follow the law. Uh, it's, more, more, it's more possible and, and powerful than it is, you know, if you, you try and get, if you get in trouble for breaking a law, that's not as powerful. You know, and that's what triggered this whole confrontation was the fact that, oh, I, I didn't really understand some of the stuff I'd be signing at first, and I uh, thought it was interesting and should be documented, and starting to document it resulted in, you know, these officials in my face, or at least one official. And if I just signed everything on the dotted line without checking to make sure everything I'm doing is lawful, well, they wouldn't have cared, at least not until much later, if I had signed something inappropriately. Anyway, there was a family there watching part of what I was doing and uh, the dad began explaining to his daughter that I was a watchdog and what a watchdog was. He said they're generally not needed as much in New Hampshire where there's not as much corruption but they're really important in big cities. But anyway, there's a reason for wanting to be able to film in that location. Although I, I probably would have had, I probably would have just turned the camera off while I was voting because it wasn't very interesting. But you need to be, you need to be able to have the right to do that because what happens if that's the location where someone comes up and gets in your face, or uh, that's the location where an official does something that's questionable? Oh, so that's just an area where such behavior can't be documented on film the supposedly most sacrosanct location in all of American, or at least Winchester, democracy? If we don't have rights there, where exactly do we have rights? Rights to record, I guess I should say. Anyway, so, again, the plan is to do pretty much nothing else interesting in Winchester, unless forced to. Just a plan, might be an exception or two here and there. You've probably heard of Porkfest, but have you heard of Forkfest? It's a decentralized alternative. It's also at Rogers Campground at a slightly different time. You don't even need a ticket. Visit ForkFest.party. It's gonna be a party.